Welcome to hour number two live right here on the early line on this Friday on Sports Grid. He is Donnie Right Side. I mm-hmm. am Ben Stevens. Some basketball talk as NBA Summer League action in Las Vegas gets officially underway tonight. But beyond that, Donnie, tomorrow, mm-hmm. the Baltimore Ravens send their rookies to Ooh. training camp. Tomorrow, wow. July 13th, you could argue the 2024 NFL season officially begins. The Ravens, of course, open up the regular season, the opening Thursday night of the year in Kansas City. So after we talk some basketball, we really get into a football Friday here in hour number two. What a glorious time that is going to be. Some NFL news and notes. And then the mastermind of the college football pigskin back from a very long vacation. Joe Lisi yeah. will join us in the second half hour here of hour two to look at the media days we have seen this week in college football. What a time it's going to be. Yes, absolutely it is. And I, we, I think we've all missed Joe Lisi on the network. Like last time he was on yeah. the air, I believe it was Super Bowl Sunday. So having him come back onto the air here in July to sort of get the, you know, wet the whistle per se, getting it ready for this weekend's action, which means, again, the Baltimore, like just seeing, the guys running around out there, little helmets, a little play action pass, yeah, a little like, oh, now. my goodness, these rookies are fantastic. You can't get enough of that. So I'm ready for this to begin. And also, that would, is there like a moniker for like next week in the business, Ben? Like, is it like, does everybody in the business look forward to next week and say, as long as you can just make it through that Monday, the Friday, oh. it's all gravy yeah. from here on out. It just feels like they try to test us. Like the gambling gods, the sporting gods, the, the content mm-hmm. gods are like, you know what? If you're really mm-hmm. good at your job here, you will excel next week. And then we'll give you the gift of football from here on out. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's that four-day stretch, right, from when the All-Star break begins at the end of Sunday night. We've got the Home Run Derby on Monday, the Midsummer Classic, the All-Star Game on Tuesday, two days off of Major League Baseball. You really got to get creative, and we will next week here on the early line. But let's continue looking at what we saw this week in the WNBA and starting tonight in Las Vegas, the official debut of the NBA Summer League out in the desert. Again, Angel Reese yesterday. 15th consecutive double-double. But the odds didn't really move as she adds on to her record to win Rookie of the Year. Caitlin Cork, after historic performance, after historic performance, remains the minus 850 favorite. Chicago lost yesterday on the road in Brooklyn against the WNBA's best team. The Liberty now improved to 19-4 and this year, so only a half-game difference between these two. And again, I think one of the great things, Donnie, if these, if the season ended today, both Angel Reese in the sky and Caitlin Clark in the fever would be in the WNBA postseason. Yeah, that's what we want, and that's what the WNBA wants. That's what the fans want at this point. You want to see these two young superstars who are excelling in the rookie year when all we heard was coming in like, hey, now, it's an exciting rookie class. We get it. There's a huge learning curve. Their games won't translate right away, and they've been nothing but absolute being standouts this season. So we are hoping that both of those teams do get into the playoffs yeah. here and do get into that run. So I'm looking forward to the remaining parts of the WNBA season, even if it's gone for an entire month. Now, you want to get on a topic on what the heck is going on at this point and absolutely nonsense of taking a month off in a season, you're going to get that with the, the WNBA. Olympics, yeah, that's ridiculous. What is, Look, here, you know it, what? Hear, hear me out on this. Hear me the out on Olympics. This. They, they go to the Olympics. The league still goes. We just want to see Caitlin Clark. She's not in the Olympics. Just have the WNBA, the WNBA roll on. We'll get massive ratings still without those people. And by the way, does anybody even know any of the all-stars that are actually going to the the uh, Team USA there for the women's basketball team? Oh, come we know on, Caitlin Clark. Brother. We know Angel Reese. They're going to stay home and play. We're fine with that. Just let the season go on. Let us enjoy our basketball. There's no reason to take a month off here. Stop. Come on. I mean, it's the best players in the W, Asia Wilson, who was I mean, who on is it, Rebecca tonight. Lobo? I mean, who's going? I don't even know. I don't no, even know. Come on. You were doing so well. Please disregard what Donnie had to say. Asia Wilson leads her Las Vegas Aces on the road tonight in Atlanta. They're a 13-point favorite against the Dream. Now make it 14, 167 hmm. and a half. Las Vegas has won eight of their last nine with Chelsea Gray back in the fold. Asia Wilson coming off a 24-point, 20-rebound performance. Caitlin Clark in the fever at home tonight in Indianapolis. Historic individual output from Caitlin Clark earlier this week on Camp Day. 
but a bad loss for Indiana at home against the Washington Mystics looking to bounce back short underdog against the Phoenix Mercury love the look at the fever bouncing back maybe even money line and I think we see some points today in Indianapolis 173 the total there interesting game between the Minnesota Lynx and the Seattle Storm Donnie I said earlier this week the Lynx on the road in LA against the Sparks was only a four and a half point spread smelled a little bit fishy that's because Nafisa Collier did not play one of the best bigs in the league for Minnesota now a six and a half point spread in favor of the Storm I would not expect to see Collier play if that's what the line looks like tonight. Yeah, exactly. The overnight line in that game, by the way, had the storm minus three and a half and has ballooned as many as yeah. minus seven. So I think that's probably that telling indicator there. But also keep in mind, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the Indiana Fever last time out against the Phoenix Mercury beat them in Phoenix. So now getting points yeah. at home in a high total of 174 and a half, we should get another great effort there. So I'm interested to see in a bounce back performance what we get out of the Fever at home after knowing they already beat Brittany Griner and the Mercury on their own home court. So we'll see. Yeah. Caitlin Clark, a huge day against Diana Taurasi and Phoenix. Kalia Copper, huge day for her earlier this week as the Mercury put up 100 against the Dallas Wings on camp day. Not just in the W with the triple header tonight. So many summer league games in Las Vegas. As we look at the board for today, the Magic and the Cavs, the T-Wolves and the Pelicans, the Grizzlies and the Kings, the Lakers and the Rockets. We're going to see Bronny James. We're going to see Zach Eady. We are going to see all of that on display today in Las Vegas. What are you most looking forward to, Donnie Wright side, when it comes to summer league? Look, I just like the fact that we're playing basketball. It's something to watch live and also the way the NBA is doing it here. you got a game at 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and 6 o'clock along with 7.30 all out in Las Vegas at different arenas and different venues. This is why Vegas is the perfect spot there. There's so many arenas that you can do this with that you can mix and match and put these games up. So I think this is a boom because it used to be in the past like, okay, summer leagues, this has become now big time business and a destination where people are taking time saying, you know what? I'll go to Vegas this weekend. Why? The summer league's going on. We'll have some fun out there and see what's what i love the fact that the nba has this summer league at this time of the year it's great marketing good to see that competition of course we want to see the new rookies and how they perform now at this elevated level and donnie one of the main things around summer league is the rookie of the year odds and how drastically they have already moved from the end of the nba draft about three weeks ago to where we are now as the full summer league in sin city really begins Alex Saar the second overall pick to Washington was the favorite following the draft the number one overall selection Zachary Rizache was a uh, tied for the second best price along with Stefan Castle at plus 750 Zach Eady had a 10 to 1 number Eady is now the NBA rookie of the year favorite at six Mm. to one I still don't know if it's public perception maybe the most recognizable name from the college ranks in this year's NBA draft class, or if people actually believe that Zach Eady is going to and can win the NBA Rookie of the Year award. But for whatever reason, Eady now at 6-1 to one in front of both Saar and Riza Shea. Now, Riza Shea and Saar, correct me if I'm wrong, they haven't played any summer league action We have yet. not seen correct? them yet. Correct. Yeah, so we're going to get knowledge. that. Yeah, we're... We're going to get that instant reaction right away, similar to what you saw from Zach Eady. Like, oh, my goodness. Like, we didn't know Zach Eady, who was a multiple-time, I believe, National Player of the Year. We didn't know he could play in the average. Like, what are we? Like, come on now. The guy's going to be able to have his good games here. Now the fact's going to come in where we were expectations on Webb and Yama last year. It's got so out of control in game number one. The guy stinks. He's a bust. He's never going to be able to make it into play maybe one of those generational talents that we find. I'm interested to see when these two kids get on the court what that instant reaction is going to be on Twitter and social media and if that's going to be enough to push some of those numbers around further. The two countrymen, Riza Shea and Sar, play each other tonight. Football news next.
DeMar DeRozan now joins that team in Sacramento with the King. Aaron Fox, DeMontis Sabonis, Devin Carter, who they drafted early, Keegan Murray as well. A Kings team, DRS, that has been a playoff contender. Is it going to equate to a championship? Probably not. That's not the goal. Make your team better every offseason. The Kings definitely got better with that move here, Ben. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. I think the one comparison that I'd like to make that reminds me of, of Tiger is, is Scotty's ability to make shots on the Sunday look like shots on the Thursday. And Tiger was so good at doing that too. In the high pressure leverage moments, he did he didn't lose a step. You know, he was still able to hit it pin high. He's still knocking down flag sticks. He doesn't miss hit it. Only on Sports Grid. It is Canada. You know, Canada is one of those teams that's the darling of, of the tournament right now. They're still 9-1. to one. To win a tournament or even to advance far into a tournament like this, you need a bit of good fortune. And it doesn't matter if you're getting the good fortune that Canada has where they played two matches where they were up a man or you had the good fortune of Argentina, who's one of the best teams in the world, who just got on the good side of the draw. Newswire. Only on Sports Grid. Watch out for USA and Canada in four years. Like in eight, like cricket's going to be a sport that's growing. I made my first cricket bet last week or over the weekend. I was getting a team that was leading like 150 to five plus odds. I'm like, I'm up 150 points and I'm getting plus odds. Where do I sign? I love this freaking stuff. What are you kidding me? In game live, prime time only on Sports Grid. Some NFL news and notes. Again, it bears repeating because it does feel significant. Rookies go to camp for the Ravens tomorrow. Training camp around the National Football League officially begins tomorrow on a Saturday. We'll have the young rooks starting to report by the time we get to the middle of next week. DRS 12 of 32 clubs will have their rookies mm. in camp. The first veterans to show up a week from today. That's Friday, July 19th. It's the Chicago Bears mm -hmm. as the Bears get ready for the Hall of Fame game in Canton, Ohio on the first day of August against the Houston Texans. So football is right around the corner, and it's a beautiful thing. Some NFL news yesterday, maybe in name notable, not necessarily in production or availability the last few seasons. But Jamal Adams, who, of course, was a first-round pick by the Jets, sixth overall back in 2017 after a few years in Seattle in the Pacific Northwest, signed and agreed to a one-year deal with the Tennessee Titans yesterday. By the way, Amani Hooker is going to be back there in that secondary with him. Do you know where Amani Hooker went to uh, college, BSS? Just want to ask you that trivia question. Yeah, Iowa. All right, there you go. So you got that out of the way. And by the way, real quick, another point as we get to the uh, Tennessee Titans. Going to camp here. Have we all gone to camp? Like, if you played football out here, yeah. Ben, you've played football before. As a youngster have, yeah. through high school and college, there is nothing worse than, than seeing your calendar count down to the first day of camp and what torture that is. Now, granted, in the oh. NFL, it's much less torturous. They are in plush, you know, facilities at this time. They practice, Ben, for like an hour and a half when we used to have triples, which means we had a full practice in the morning, a full practice around lunchtime, and a full practice around dinner time, and then repeated that for like two straight weeks. It was ridiculous. So shout out to the people right now that are going through camp and can't stand it as it's coming up. Now, having said that, the Tennessee Titans making yeah. a move for Adams, I, I don't really think that's going to make all that much of a difference. Now, we are going to yeah. get into, Ben, some of the notable decisions that they have made in the offseason. And this is one of those teams that I'm looking at going like, this is money well spent. 
or this is fool's money spent on trying to chase a dream sure. of trying to win seven or eight games, which we're going to dip into in just a few moments. But Adams, it doesn't move the Richter scale. You brought it up, Ben. Three or four years ago, what did we get? Nine and a half sacks out of a safety? Ridiculous. He has been invisible yeah. for the past two to three seasons, and I don't know if we're catching lightning in a bottle because the one thing we know about Adams, he's more linebacker than defensive back, and if he's going to be playing yeah. in that defensive back position, teams are going to be able to get behind him and score touchdowns. He only has four INTs in his seven-year NFL career. Again, the sixth overall pick by the New York Jets back in 2017. Was slightly disgruntled with the organization by the time he reached his third year. But from 2018 to 2020, Jamal Adams was a three-time Pro Bowler in a row, consecutively making AP All-Pro teams around the NFL as well. It was big news in the 2020 offseason when Seattle traded two first-rounders to the Jets to get Jamal Adams and it paid off that first year with the Seahawks again nine and a half sacks in 2020 from a safety the most we have ever seen from a DB in the history of the National Football League but in the last three years not nearly as good only 10 total games in the last two seasons but the Titans Donnie that's the interesting thing First-year head coach Brian Callahan spent the past few years as the offensive coordinator under Zach Taylor in Cincinnati And it's a team that we thought was kind of on the rebuild. Ryan Tannehill's days are done. They'll see what they have out of Will Levis entering year number two. They let the face of the franchise, Derrick Henry, walk this offseason. Now he's in Baltimore. Okay, a rebuild. A team with a win total of six and a half. The under has the juice at minus 150. The fourth and longest price of all four teams in the AFC South. About what we would expect. But then Rand Carthen, in his second year as the GM in Nashville, making some intriguing news. They paid Calvin Ridley the big bucks. Four-year deal, 92 mil. They add Tyler Boyd to reunite with his former OC in Cincy, now the head coach, Brian Callahan. After letting Derrick Henry go, maybe believing in the second-year pro in Tajay Spears, who had a great rookie campaign for the Titans, they signed Tony Pollard to a three-year, $24 million deal. Legereus Sneed, franchise tagged by the Chiefs because they didn't want to pay him. Tennessee says, all right, we'll do that. They trade for him to add him to Nashville. I'm not really sure what to make of the Titans. It seems like they're living in this weird gray limbo area between contender and pretender right now. Yeah, and Rand Carthon, I'll give him a little bit of credit here because you want to go in the self-preservation mode, and the owner gives you the keys to the castle and says, hey, you got an open checkbook here. Go out and make this team better. He really made that team better because he has some solid players in the secondaries you brought up bringing over the free agency, a very athletic front seven. But when we talk about the offense, here's what you're never going to get me to argue against, Ben. You take a look at, we don't know what Will Levis is. But you know what Rand Carthon didn't do? You know what? Uh, I'm going to give you a couple young wide receivers. See if you can make it work. We'll grade you on that. He goes, no, 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 no. I'm going to give you a true look at this season. Let's see what you can do with a legitimate trio of wide receivers. Hopkins, Boyd, and Ridley will give that to you. A decent tight end and two solid running backs that are known also for catching passes out of the backfield. I love how they're setting up Will Levis to succeed, not sink or swim like we always talk about Justin Fields in Chicago. So as I talked about to open up this segment, I actually don't know what I'm getting here. Because if you tell me right now, Will Levis can be a competent quarterback. I'm not talking about being a top 10, and I'm not talking about being the 28th pick. Let's just say the 20th overall quarterback in the NFL. Why can't this team hit its win total? They have enough talent on this team. And also, you're worried about a new head coach as well moving in. The factors around the situation are kind of tough to say, you know what, I think Tennessee is in a decent spot. But they have the talent on this team. If things break right, which really means if Will Levis is a good NFL quarterback, why can't they win seven or eight games next year? That's not too outlandish. It's a really good point. Look at the cast and crew he has around him. Tony Pollard has a lot left in the tank. Tajay Spears was one of my favorite day two selections Mm -hmm. in all the NFL draft in 2023. He had a great rookie year out of Tulane, kind of the compliment to the size that is Derrick Henry. Again, six and a half the win total for Tennessee. Plus 470 to make the playoffs. Eight to one number, fourth and longest in the AFC South. But Donnie, I think the AFC South, not the best division in football entering Mm -hmm. 2024, but the most compelling 
You've got a new change yeah. at the top. The Texans expected to do so much. Will Jacksonville, after paying Trevor Lawrence, be the preseason favorites we expected and really through week 11 of a year ago? How about the Colts with Anthony Richardson? So much more to discuss in the football realm next. When it comes to betting on sports, injuries matter, and Sports Injury Central has you covered all year long with expert injury analysis and injury-based picks for the NFL, NBA, and MLB. Our former pro sports doctors have unmatched experience to analyze every injury so you know the impact of the player, team, and their upcoming matchup. Whether it's articles, podcasts, player insights, or our patented injury scores, Sports Injury Central will help you keep up with your fantasy team and make more informed wagers. So make sure you follow Sports Injury Central and gain an edge at sixscore.com your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value they didn't but your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol the backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage the New York D has the most sacks in the league so yeah trust your head it's smarter to be on sports grid Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern. On- Out in Tahoe this weekend, it's a fun celebration always for the celebs out on the golf links. It's the American Century Championship. You see celebrities, you see athletes playing in this golf tournament. Aaron Rodgers, not a bad stick when it comes to playing on the golf course. And Aaron Rodgers, one who says we can't have any drama, always loves the drama. Yesterday, as he was walking on the course in the practice round out there at Lake Tahoe, said, quote, I love Devontae Adams. I can't wait to play with him. Dot, dot, dot. Again, Mm. receiver Mm. is going on right now, DRS, a new Netflix documentary series in the fashion of quarterback that is following multiple receivers and one tight end, George Kittle, of the San Francisco 49ers last season throughout the NFL campaign. They've showed a couple clips of Devontae Adams in Las Vegas who does not look oh so pleased to be in the desert without his best friend, that, of course, Derek Carr, who they played together in Fresno. They played 2022 together, but Devontae by himself last year in 2023. What do you make of Aaron Rodgers' remarks yesterday at the American Century Championship? Yeah, shout out Garrett Wilson right now because all he's heard from Aaron Rodgers is, okay, you're going to be a young superstar wideout. This is why we drafted to the Jets. And Aaron Rodgers comes over and says, well, I need 16 other wideouts who are all my best friends to compete with this guy. And then when he says, it's my turn to take the next level, you're hearing out here talking about another wide receiver saying, I can't wait to play with this other guy. Why? Because I'm not good enough. So I understand how the wide receiver's mindset works where you're figuring you're going to get all the footballs going your way, but the quarterback 
Zach keeps on telling the football team, I need more help at wide receiver because apparently Garrett Wilson isn't good enough. And we always talk about Aaron Rodgers now where he coined that phrase. Let's keep it all about football here in the building when all he does is stir controversy everywhere he goes, which includes 3,000 miles away in a golf tournament, making headlines by saying, I can't wait to play with another wide receiver. Shout out Garrett Wilson today. You know he's not taking that kindly, Ben. The Offensive Rookie of the Year in 2022, Garrett Wilson. The issue has never been football for the New York Jets in this 18-month experiment so far, I guess you could say, with Aaron Rodgers. But why, just like, what is he doing? You met, here's my point. Back in the day, there was the whole rift between Aaron Rodgers and his family. And many people said... Wonder what is happening here. Why isn't Aaron Rodgers closer to his family? Now I get it. His true colors have just come out in such a large way since he left Green Bay. Even the final few years, he was with the Packers organization. He is the guy that seeks everything. It's a gravitational pull toward him. And those people often blame others, the media, speculation, whatever it might be. Selfish individuals find ways to always make things self-serving and about their individual self, even in a pro-am golf tournament in Lake Tahoe, California. If I'm Robert Sala, if I'm Garrett Wilson, if I'm Brees Hall, if I'm Quinnen Williams, I'm thinking to myself, I've had enough, and enough isn't even a full calendar year really all together playing football. If it doesn't work this year, and what exactly does work mean for the New York Jets as we kind of change our relative expectation because of all the attention and notoriety? If this year doesn't work for Gang Green, it is going to be looked at as one of the great disasters in the history of the National Football League. It is going to set this franchise back, if it hasn't already, by multiple years, a half decade, a full decade, for a franchise that can ill afford it with so much young talent on the roster outside of the quarterback position. A franchise that has failed to make the postseason for 13 consecutive seasons. So I said, Donnie, if it doesn't work... What is work for the New York Jets? Is it cashing a minus 172 price to make the postseason for the first time in nearly a decade and a half? Or is it truly contending for an AFC championship? I don't know if it's contending for a championship, but it's a must to get to the playoffs and a must win a playoff game to continue to see that as a success. We were talking about last year. Yeah, you get Aaron Rodgers, you're going to the Super Bowl. We're going to limit those expectations, but they still should be to compete in a talented AFC. And are we like game one? Like we're going to see this team where like, you know, the, the teammates themselves were the Mike White jerseys on the plane while Aaron Rodgers is on that plane, similar to what we saw previously. Like when do we have a mutiny on our hands for the New York Jets? Uh, it's going to be a one and three start because that media is waiting to pounce as well. DRS, if they make the playoffs and get bounced in their first postseason game, is Aaron Rodgers back in 2025? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Where else are they going? Okay. I don't know, but it's an interesting question. We'll talk about it with Joe Lee up next. That team in Sacramento with the King. Aaron Fox, DeMontis Sabonis, Devin Carter, who they drafted early, Keegan Murray as well. A Kings team, DRS, that has been a playoff contender. Is it going to equate to a championship? Probably not. That's not the goal. Make your team better every offseason. The Kings definitely got better with that move here, Ben. The early line, only on Sports Grid. I think the one comparison that I'd like to make that reminds me of, of Tiger is, is Scotty's ability to make shots on a Sunday look like shots on a Thursday. And Tiger was so good at doing that too. In the high pressure leverage moments, he, di he didn't lose a step. You know, he was still able to hit it pin high. He's still knocking down flag sticks. He doesn't miss hit it. Only on Sports Grid. 
it is Canada. You know, Canada is one of those teams that's the darling of, of the tournament right now. They're still 9-1. to one. To win a tournament, or even to advance far into a tournament like this, you need a bit of good fortune. And it doesn't matter if you're getting the good fortune that Canada has where they played two matches where they were up a man, or you had the good fortune of Argentina, who's one of the best teams in the world, who just got on the good side of the draw. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. Watch out for USA and Canada in four years. Like, in eight, like cricket's going to be a sport that's growing. I made my first cricket bet last week or over the weekend. I was getting a team that was leading like 150 to 5 plus odds. I'm like, I'm up 150 points and I'm getting plus odds? Where do I sign? I love this freaking stuff. What are you kidding me? In Game Live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. It's been a while, but if you need a true sign that football is near, the mastermind of the pigskin joins us on what this second half, half hour will be known as of our second hour, a football Friday. That's Joe Lisi here bright and early on the early line on this Friday. Lisi guy, we're glad to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Oh, I must be on probation, right? This summer's for the early line. This is what it's all about with Ben Stevens and Donnie Wrightside. I thought maybe early, late August, but here we are in July. So, obviously, I did something wrong. Lazy guy, we try haven't it. It seen... be good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to be good. Lazy guy, we uh, haven't seen you on the early line in a little no. bit of time, of course, on Coast to Coast, all over the Sports Grid Radio Network, Carver and Lisi, 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Sports Grid Radio. But we've heard from you a few times in the last month or so. I believe we have a couple of times where we've heard from Ooh. Joe Lisi. Let's play him now. Wow. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> See, we've got that one when we've given out some best bets. And anytime we want to talk Major League Baseball with our MLB insider, we've got this one as well. Craig! <laughs> See, Joe, your voice is never all that far away from us here at the Sports Grid Network. Thank you for doing all that when our producer, Joe Frizo hits you up. Oh, mm. absolutely, right? Especially when he says, keep it on the DL, the down low. Don't let anybody know just between me and you. So I love doing that stuff. And I know he sends me the clips after he plays them. So love the reaction by both you and Donnie. And now, you're on, not a one-take ask... wonder. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah go let, ahead. Me, let me ask you this quick question on this, too. Like, we love college football over here. And some people are saying that maybe I should be included in the college football show because of some <laughs> outlandish comments here that we've heard in the past. So let's check that oh, out. Oh, by me? Huh? Outlandish mm. comments mm. by Three me. or four from mm. the Guardians. Three straight over the Reds. Some optimism into the final weekend before oh, the All-Star break. Matt Beerling yesterday, three RBIs. Who said that? I'll show That's my age. Absolutely. You can make fun of me, but who said... Wait a second. Uh, you, you're not being – uh, you, yeah, you must be playing along with me. And, no, it wasn't Jim Leland that said it. It was another famous coach with a little bit of a background in the South who loved to eat Cajun food oh. and sometime – yep, sports grid. Now, you sat in with oh. the guy. We oh. asked this guy multiple you know questions. What? Hold on a second. We clip this. That is on clip me. This send this to that Lisi. is on me. Send this to college I football. I didn't realize – This guy can't represent college I didn't football. I didn't realize – Yeah, that, that – yeah, honestly, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I thought you were referencing a movie – that was on me. That's Ed Ogeron. That's Coach O. I didn't realize you were oh, spelling good. go, G-E-A-U-X. Uh, oh, boy. You want to tee up the next game, even though it's Dean's good. Day number 11? I think I need a time you know, out for like a second that. to recollect I myself. I do like that because sometimes yeah. you think like the partner behind the scenes with he's like, you know, let me just have some fun with this. So I was like, I'll mm. play along. But then noticing that it was actually getting a little bit serious right there. Yeah, go Tigers. Perfect. Oh, well, it didn't hit. I mean, Lisa, the guy didn't know go Tigers. Didn't know who said wow. that. Is that, talk, that, hurt, that hurt show, LSU. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, he loves him. Go Tigers. Baton Rouge. That's his saying. So he'll get it right for, for August second week. Bill Rowe. <laughs> I'm used he's to, smart. we talk about he's Baton smart. Rouge now in the Bayou Bengals. I'm used to, he's family down there in the Bayou. Things are different <laughs> That's now. That's yeah. on me. I will own it. I will wear it. All right. Now to Lisey's actual expertise, that is the world of football, not just our inside bits mm. here on the early line. Although ugly work from Donnie Wright's side, my co-host <laughs> and my producer, Joe Frizo, to sneak that underneath me without putting it in the rundown. Anyway, Lisey Guy, we heard from Aaron Rodgers as we played the clip earlier, or at least the quote, of him speaking at uh, the American Century Championship yesterday in Tahoe about the idea there could be a potential reunion with Devontae Adams. Do you think there's an actual realistic chance that by the end of the season, Devontae Adams is in New York? And if not, Joe... Why does Aaron Rodgers just keep talking to bring more drama to gang green? Because that's what Aaron Rodgers does, guys. You know that as well as anybody else. And if he does play with Devontae Adams, I don't think it'll be in the New York Jets uniform. Again, this team right now is an absolute train wreck. Robert Salah's dead man walking. And again, expecting this team to get over nine and a half wins for the upcoming season and be a potential wild card. I just don't see it. Yes, they have the players on paper, but continuity and certainly the locker room, they don't have that with their supposed leader, Aaron Rodgers. Joe, if somebody told you, and rightfully so last year, they got seven wins with some of the most ridiculous quarterback play you were going to have. Yeah. Now, if we say that Aaron Rodgers, and again, we can't predict the future of is he going to get hurt again or how he's going to come back from that injury. Let's just say he's somewhat the Aaron Rodgers we anticipated him to be when he came over to the Jets. How can you sell somebody and say, you know what? That's just a seven or eight win football team at this point. They got talent at every level. How do you look for the optimism with Aaron Rodgers and tell somebody like they should be a 10 win football team here? Well, they should. You're right. They're clearly better than the New England Patriots. They can challenge both the Buffalo Bills and the Miami Dolphins from a roster perspective, but it goes down to Aaron Rodgers. I said it, you know, throughout the week, I said it on the off off season shows that if Aaron Rodgers was completely dialed in, he would have been at the mandatory minicamp. I mean, you're the face of the franchise. You're the leader. You haven't played in a Jets uniform outside of basically four plays. What does that show your team? What does it show the younger players? What does it show the veterans? Do you really believe that Aaron Rodgers really cares about winning an AFC championship? I don't. And from the betting and gambling perspective, I'm selling the nine and a half guys. Nine and a half has the over at minus 162. Lisey, I think if you want to make an excuse for Aaron Rodgers, you say him missing two days at practice doesn't really mean much. He can keep talking about all this offseason drama. It's the offseason. It's not going to affect the actual football, the X's and O's by the time we get to the 2024 NFL campaign. But it does bring attention to the biggest media market and a big organization in it, the New York Jets. With that attention, Your expectation level changes. If you look simply at the New York Jets improving on what they have done the last decade and a half, that would be a playoff spot. They have not reached the playoffs for 13 consecutive seasons. So what do you think the New York Jets will consider success this year? Is it double-digit wins? Is it a playoff berth? is Is it a divisional title? Is it contending for the AFC Championship? So it has to be at least 10 wins in a wild card. I'll give you that, especially with Aaron Rodgers coming back from the Achilles. And Donnie touched on it as well. There's no guarantee that Aaron Rodgers is going to hit the ground running. Last time he played a full season, he threw 12 interceptions and cost his team a playoff appearance against the Detroit Lions. So for me, that's the biggest question. I still can't believe from the from the odds perspective, guys, they are $10 cheaper right, in terms of shorter odds than the Cleveland Browns at 20-1 to that made it with Joe Flacco last year, their fourth-string quarterback. If we look also and just say, because the Jets right now do seem like a powder keg. If things go right, they can be a pretty good football team. But, Joe, is it just so simple to put the focus on Aaron Rodgers where if he plays well, the Jets make the playoffs? If he doesn't, then they're just going nowhere. Or can they just get average play out of Aaron Rodgers and still be a quality football team? Because this team looks like it's ready to make a move, but we just don't know if it's bad or good this year. 
Well, again, yeah, we saw the situation play out in, in Denver a couple of years ago where the defense kept them in games each and every game, and Russell Wilson and the quarterback play failed to elevate to the next level, and the team imploded in the second half of the season. So comes down to Robert Salah, comes down to the defense, Donnie. They need to be legit throughout the season. The defense was great last year and has a ton of young talent to anchor the way once again. But we know the Russell Wilson era just two years in Denver was a disaster. How long will Aaron Rodgers be in New York? What will the overall outcome and result be for this franchise that is bigger than just one individual? But we focus on the individual races for an NFL MVP up next. Now joins that team in Sacramento with the King, Aaron Fox, DeMontis Sabonis, Devin Carter, who they drafted early, Keegan Murray as well. A Kings team, DRS, that has been a playoff contender. Is it going to equate to a championship? Probably not. But that's not the goal. Make your team better every offseason. The Kings definitely got better with that move here, Ben. The early line, only on Sports Grid. I think the one comparison that I'd like to make that reminds me of, of Tiger is, is Scotty's ability to make shots on the Sunday look like shots on the Thursday. And Tiger was so good at doing that too. In the high pressure leverage moments, he, did, he didn't lose a step. You know, he was still able to hit it pin high. He's still knocking down flag sticks. He doesn't miss hit it. Only on Sports Grid. It is Canada. You know, Canada is one of those teams that's the darling of of the tournament right now. They're still 9-1. to To win a tournament or even to advance far into a tournament like this, you need a bit of good fortune. And it doesn't matter if you're getting the good fortune that Canada has where they played two matches where they were up a man or you had the good fortune of Argentina, who's one of the best teams in the world, who just got on the good side of the draw. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. Watch out for USA and Canada in four years. Like in eight, like cricket's going to be a sport that's growing. I made my first cricket bet last week or over the weekend. I was getting a team that was leading like 150 to five plus odds. I'm like, I'm up 150 points and I'm getting plus odds. Where do I sign? I love this cricket stuff. What are you kidding me? In game live, prime time only on Sports Grid. As we've shared, training camp starts tomorrow. The rookies for the Ravens show up on Saturday. By the time we get to Wednesday of next week, we will have 12 of 32 clubs already sending their rookies to report to camp. And I lied earlier, and I apologize. I said the Bears were the first team to send their veterans to camp a week from today, a couple of days earlier, a Wednesday in H-Town. The Texans, who will take on the Bears in the Hall of Fame game on August 1st, send both their rookies and their veterans. That includes C.J. Stroud. Joe Lisi here for a second consecutive segment on a Football Friday half hour here on TEL. Lisi guy Patrick Mahomes, the favorite to win the NFL MVP award, entering this year at 5-1. to one. Not all that far behind, Josh Allen at 8-1. to one. C.J. Stroud and Joe Burrow tied to the third best number at 10-1 to one in the reigning NFL MVP, Lamar Jackson, who has won it twice in his career in a group at 14-1 to one alongside Jalen Hurts and Jordan Love. Let's go a couple of places on that board. Lisi, if you're looking for a true contender for the NFL MVP winner in 2024, who gets your first nod? Joey Silk, guys. Joe Burrow, Cincinnati, 10-1. to 1. Now that T. Higgins is there for one year with Jamar Chase, I think they're going to light it up. I know there's concerns in regards to the wrist injury, but I believe in Joe Burrow, back-to-back AFC championships that you know, he took his team, too, in terms of appearances, and I think he could do it 
yet again, they match up very well against the Kansas City Chiefs as well. By the way, if we are taking a look at Joe Burrow, is there anything of a worry, not about Joe Burrow's health himself, but the wide receiver position where they might not be happy this season entering into that? Does that play into the Cincinnati Bengals mindset for you at all? Well, Donnie, we talked about it as well. That if Joe Burrow gets hurt or he's not 100% in terms of the wrist injury and can't make all the throws, that's a cause of concern. But again, they, they had that same issue with Matt Stafford a couple of years ago and he stepped up and led yeah. his team to a playoff appearance last year so you got to buy you got to take the risk with the reward at least there's only two guys that are oh it's not okay yeah donnie's not a big bangles guy joe i know he's not you in on cincy (laughs) i am in on cincy yes i think cincinnati at seven to one is live to win an afc championship again we know chalk in regards to kansas city deserves to be there in buffalo but cincinnati has what it takes when they are healthy they are as lethal as any team in the conference. Cincinnati, the only team in the last five years that has stood in the way of Kansas City of getting to a Super Bowl, that being the Bengals and Joe Burrow. When he is healthy, good things happen in Cincy. Let's go to the middle of the pack there and the 10 best odds to win the NFL MVP award. Is there a name, Joe, that maybe is under the radar that you would look at providing some value, maybe carrying over success from a season ago? Yeah, mine was Matt Stafford. You know, he doesn't get mentioned, but you talk about the type of talent that he has for the L.A. Rams. Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup. We saw Kyron Williams take off in the second half of last year. They added Speedster and a very good running back from Michigan, Blake Quorum, national champion. And what about the two defensive players that they did? That's important as well. Fisk and Jared Verse are going to make up for the absence of Aaron yeah. Donald. I think they're going to be there. Matt Stafford at 14, 15 to 1 has great value, guys. By the way, also, let's take a look at uh, Jalen Hurts. You look at the Philadelphia Eagles. Two years yeah. ago, Shane Steichen was running that offense. Joe, it was a well-oiled machine. They go to a younger guy who was the quarterback coach in Brian Johnson. It was a disaster. It was vanilla. It just didn't work. The Eagles collapsed at the end of the season. Kellen Moore comes to town, hopefully getting that vertical pass game underway with those talented wide receivers. Give me a preview on Jalen Hurts. Are you buying or selling this year on Jalen? Yeah, I have to tread lightly with you and Kevin Walsh. Of course I love Jalen Hurts. I think he has great value. But you you attribute their fall off a cliff last year when they lost five of six to me. So I think Jalen Hurts could be one of the most explosive players in the NFC and all the NFL. He has to run a little bit more, banged up at the end of last year. But with the addition of Kellen Moore, hopefully there's more offensive balance. That'll take the pressure off. And as long as they win 11, 12 football games, I think that Jalen Hurts is right there, not only to win an NFC championship, but more importantly, a Super Bowl championship. The Eagles tied for the fifth best price to win Super Bowl 59 and that Lombardi trophy at 14 to one alongside the Bengals. It was my Super Bowl prediction a year ago. The champions of the AFC Cincy, the champions of the NFC Philly, I'm probably sticking to my guns entering 2024. Same number on the Eagles to win a Super Bowl. As for their quarterback, Jalen Hurts, to win the NFL MVP hardware at a 14-to-1 price as well. I think there's a legitimate argument to make that if Jalen Hurts wasn't banged up in the final month of the 2022 NFL campaign, he might have won the NFL MVP award away from Patrick Mahomes. I hear you guys might be going to Philly a little bit for pro football today. Whoa, 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 whoa. Really? No. If we go there, I don't know, because then I'll be outnumbered. I'm not the true Philadelphia fan. I'm not the true Philly fan. So that, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Kevin Walsh and and Donnie will outnumber me. uh, They'll love him over there in Philadelphia. Hopefully it, hopefully it happens, I guess. I don't know. Hmm. I like that. A little meal after, yeah. Joe. We've been waiting to catch up to a meal lately. Maybe it could happen in Philadelphia. We could break bread in Philadelphia. I'll get you guys a pass to cross over the bridge. It's okay. You guys will be safe. I would love to do it. Donnie, Donnie in the offseason doesn't drive more than 10 miles no. radius by, that's so true. that's it. You, can, you, can't, get him, you yep. can't get him out of the, the <laughs> South Jersey. You know, you can't get him to make a drive more than 10 miles, so you have to come can't to Can't make it to Windsor. Mm-hmm. I mean, listen, that might be that might be the case from what I'm hearing for the NFL season as well. Oof. I see a double date in your guys' future. 
You know, hey, now. both of you guys. Uh, what's up? Hey, 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 hey. You guys are hitting low early. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, well, it's Hold on, let me bring up some names. Let me drop some names right now, live uh, yeah, right here. Can we do that? Uh, no? <laughs> you guys are real good. You know that? You guys, uh, yeah. I love you. Both. We we like to have some fun, and we're going to continue to have some fun on the other side of the break because now we go into college football. I got the two experts next to me because I forgot mm. who Ed Ogeron was, Joe Lisi <laughs> and Donnie Wrightside, as we look at what we have seen this week out in Sin City in Las Vegas. Big 12 media days, the Colorado conversation with Joe Lisi and some Heisman odds to boot. Up next, you're on Ooh. the early line on Sports. Now joins that team in Sacramento with the King, Aaron Fox, DeMontis Sabonis, Devin Carter, who they drafted early, Keegan Murray as well. A Kings team, DRS, that has been a playoff contender. Is it going to equate to a championship? Probably not. That's not the goal. Make your team better every offseason. The Kings definitely got better with that move here, Ben. The early line, only on Sports Grid. I think the one comparison that I'd like to make that reminds me of, of Tiger is, is Scotty's ability to make shots on a Sunday look like shots on a Thursday. And Tiger was so good at doing that too. In the high pressure leverage moments, he, di- he didn't lose a step. You know, he was still able to hit it pin high. He's still knocking down flag sticks. He doesn't miss hit it. Only on Sports Grid. It is Canada. You know, Canada is one of those teams that's the darling of, of the tournament right now. They're still 9-1. to one. To win a tournament or even to advance far into a tournament like this, you need a bit of good fortune. And it doesn't matter if you're getting the good fortune that Canada has where they played two matches where they were up a man or you had the good fortune of Argentina, who's one of the best teams in the world, who just got on the good side of the draw. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Watch out for USA and Canada in four years. Like in eight, like cricket's going to be a sport that's growing. I made my first cricket bet last week or over the weekend. I was getting a team that was leading like 150 to five plus odds. I'm like, I'm up 150 points and I'm getting plus odds. Where do I sign? I love this cricket yeah. stuff. What are you kidding me? In game live prime time only on sports grid. Training camp starts this weekend in the National Football League. That's the unofficial kickoff of what we will see in an NFL season. Fall camp on the horizon in college football, but the real unofficial kickoff, media days around the country. In Las Vegas this week, Big 12 media days. After hours with the Beavs and Cougs, presented by the Pac-12 and Mountain West media days. We focus on the Big 12 in Sin City. And of course, on Wednesday afternoon, It was the prime era in year number two in Colorado, getting off to a start with Deion Sanders at the podium. Joe, as we look at the football perspective for Colorado this year, Donnie and I had the debate, kind of like we just did with the New York Jets, when there's so much notoriety and attention for a team that has struggled to even see the playoffs in the last decade plus, what does actual success look like for a Colorado team that was four and eight, a season ago in year number one under Deion Sanders. What does success look like in year number two? Yeah, we talked about it on the radio, Ben. Success in year two is six and six and a bowl appearance. That would be the biggest thing for Colorado to get back at least over the hump and have their sights set on year number three with the Deion era. The biggest question, Ben, and we talked about it again, 
does Dion want to be there from years three to five? Yeah. If so, the, the six win possibility is well within reach. They have winnable games. They have the type of quarterback in Shador Sanders to outscore teams. What do you get from the defense? They were pathetic against the run. And most importantly, the offensive line broke down 50 plus sacks allowed. They need to run the football better as well. Dead last in FBS. If they can get to six wins, that's a huge accomplishment. But these tickets on them winning a national championship or breaking down the college football playoff door, you got to get real. They got a tough game right out of the gate against NDSU. We'll see what happens with North Dakota State University. Certainly a quality program. But let's move on to some other Power Five conferences. You got the ACC, the Big 12, the Big 10, and the SEC. A lot of changing parts here moving through and through. Favorites here, Florida State and the ACC, Utah in the Big 12, the Big 10 still with Ohio State, and then you have Georgia at a plus 185 in the SEC. With the changing landscape of college football, give us some teams there in those power conferences that you might be looking forward to to win those conferences. Yeah, I mean, the ACC, I'm, I'm dialed into Florida State because I believe they have the best roster. Donnie, I mean, Clemson is appealing at 4-1 to one in Louisville. They made it to the ACC championship game last year and for, in the first year with Jeff Brown. They're definitely a team that has odds at 10-1. to one. In the Big 12, I know Utah's the front runner, but the conference realignment scares me. Kyle Whittingham, is he all dialed in? What do you get out of Cam Rising? So I'm going to go with my guy, Texas Tech. And Joey McGuire, I think he's done a fantastic job. Brennan Morton and Taj Brooks come back, 18 total starters. I think they have yep. legs. If we're talking the SEC, I only go with family. And I'm going with Nussmeyer mm. and Brian Kelly. They have great odds at plus 750 to win or 950 now to win the SEC yep. championship, plus 125 to make the playoffs. And Brian Kelly, I trust. Brian Kelly in year number three always does well at wherever stop he has been around college football. Let's look individual now at the Heisman Trophy odd. Dylan Gabriel, the new quarterback at Oregon, transferring from Oklahoma, plus 750. A co-favorite as he moves up the board with Carson Beck, plus 750. Georgia's quarterback, the guy on your screen, Quinn Youth. No, no, sorry. Quinn Ewers, a 10 to 1 price. I figured you might like that. That's a credit to our graphics producer, Jesse Metzger, who reminded us of a great joke. Quinn Ewers, 10 to 1 there. Third best number to win the Heisman Trophy. Lisey Guy, who gets your early look in the Heisman Trophy race? Well, on that board right now, I would take a shot on Ole Miss and Jackson Dart. We talked about his versatility. We talked about Ole Miss knocking off Penn State in the bowl game, what they bring to the table. They could be a 10-win football team and certainly make the college football playoff. So in terms of those odds, I'm taking a shot on Jackson Dart. They're going to have one of the most prolific offenses in all of college football. But to me, it's the year of the running back. I played all the running backs. Big name, Ollie Gordon now down to 75 to 1. My guy's Donovan Edwards. He started at 100 to 1, now down to 90 to 1 on multiple books. Keep an eye out for him. And then obviously, Quinshawn Junkins as well. The year of the running back. The last running back to win the. Mm. What? What do you say? Quinshawn. Uh, when you. Quinn, Quinn. That was good. That was uh, also very good. The last good time look. a running yeah. back. Won the Heisman Trophy, Derrick Henry at Alabama in 2015. Lacey Guy, we love the show, man. Thank you for being here on this Friday. Have a wonderful, wonderful Trade weekend. Hour three up next on the early line. I'm trying to hold it in right now. Um, the support's been overwhelming. Tickets for Nashville this week are nearly sold out. We are calling this the Bryson Effect. <laughs> I mean, with how much support we have out here and it's just the start, that's, that's a testament to what Live Golf is and what the Crushers are doing, what 
uh, our team's doing and um, what we're trying to do for, for Nashville and places all across the globe. So super excited for the, the future of Live. to at least walk down the last few holes or at least the last hole knowing that it was pretty much done. It's never safe, but um, I'm very proud of everybody. And, and of course, Tiro. I mean, what a week to to get his first win in a few years and win by six in an absolutely dominant performance the way he did. Uh, it was absolutely incredible, so I couldn't be happier for him. Certainly with not winning for three and a half years, you kind of naturally question if you if you can do it again. Um, so I'm, I'm just proud of myself to, to be able to get through that and um, play the way I did. 